Well, hello everyone. Good day, and I uh, hope you guys are doing well. This is uh, Chris back with the uh, the Ancient Scholar. I'm going to talk about one of the uh, gas laws that isn't on our little list of laws that that we need to go through. And the reason I'm going to talk about this law is is because it's very profound, and it's going to help us. <clears throat> excuse me, when we talk about uh, calculating. Um, other concepts such as the density of gases and the density of a gas directly relates to this law so this law is known as Avogadro's law and as we uh, may know or we may remember in chemistry there's something called Avogadro's number Avogadro's number and we know that Avogadro's number is a way of connecting the, the microscopic world, the atomic world, to the, the macroscopic world, or the world of the large. So if we look at our little periodic table of elements, and I think I've kind of gone over this um, earlier, or kind of gone over this on other uh, videos, we'll just go ahead and talk about it nonetheless real quick. And uh, you know that every element, every atom has as an atomic weight. Hydrogen, for example, um, has a weight of one. And we know that if I have an Avogadro's number of hydrogen atoms, and that number just happens to be uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, so we're moving that decimal place over 23 times. It's a huge number, but if I have that many atoms of hydrogen, it'll weigh approximately one gram. Likewise, if we choose, oh, let's say carbon here, and I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23, Avogadro's number of carbon atoms, it'll weigh about 12 grams, and you can do that pretty much uh, every element. Obviously, it won't be 100% exact because you have isotopes, and when we add or take away um, neutrons that can affect the weight, but for a real good ballpark average, uh, this Avogadro's number business works really, really nicely. Well, the other name for Avogadro's number is something called a mole. If I have a mole of hydrogen, that is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of hydrogen. Okay, so Avogadro, kind of took this concept even a little bit further and he realized something absolutely profound and it's very profound for us he realized that a mole that one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure standard temperature and pressure is being defined as zero degrees Celsius at one atmosphere that is STP, or standard temperature and pressure condition. So one mole of a gas, one mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure will have a volume of 22.4 liters. One mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure will have a volume of 22.4 liters. Now this assumes an ideal gas. oxygen, nitrogen, helium, hydrogen gas. Carbon dioxide, it, it coincidentally, is not an ideal gas. Carbon dioxide, as we know, uh, dissociates rather easily uh, in the presence of water into uh, carbonic acid, and carbonic acid can dissociate rather easily into a hydrogen ion um, and a bicarbonate ion. So. Carbon dioxide isn't technically an ideal gas, and its volume is actually going to be a little smaller than this, but we can still, for a good ballpark, say that carbon dioxide gas will kind of fit in here as well, even though we know that it's not really an ideal gas and it doesn't fit exactly. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means that if I have a mole, one mole, of hydrogen gas, its volume at STP will be 22.4 liters, but let's say that I have one mole of something that's much more, uh, much, has much more mass, one mole of O2. 
we know that um, oxygen, O2, has a molecular weight of 32. That will have the same volume, however, 22.4 liters. Well, that's real handy. Any gas we can think of, one mole of nitrogen, same volume, 22.4 liters. That's really cool because that can help us figure out the density, right? If I know that one mole of hydrogen is 22.4, well, density is nothing more than mass divided by volume. If all the gases take on a certain volume, I can compare the densities of all the gases. Hydrogen, for example, is just going to be one gram divided by 22.4 liters. That will give me the density. <clears throat> Oxygen is going to be 32 grams divided by 22.4 liters, and so on and so forth. So this is the basic concept behind Avogadro's Law, and uh, we will use this in other videos when we start calculating gas densities and when we actually start mixing gases and we want to find we want to compare the density of a certain gas mix to another for example if I'm administering maybe 70-30 heliox what is the density of that gas mix uh, versus uh, uh, giving air or giving 100 percent of oxygen uh, it will become very important a little later on okay guys hopefully that makes sense take care